Uh, okay, so this is going to be another breakdown. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, actually more of a recent role I had uh, with the uh, uh, during an open mat. Uh, this guy's name's Ryan. Uh, he's actually uh, uh, very good, actually, at uh, jiu-jitsu. But um, what I noticed more was his wrestling. His wrestling was really, really good. Um, plus, he had a his shirt was tucked in, so I <laughs> automatically kind of knew he was a he was a wrestler. So. Um, but anyways, uh, I thought this was a, this would be a good example of how to deal with, um, or just how to, you know, how to maybe, you know, different ideas to, to deal with, uh, good wrestlers with their top pressure, you know, pinning the hips, the legs and all that, and, uh, kind of what you can do. Uh, cause he was certainly doing that to me in this role. So, uh, and plus I get asked that question a lot. So let's, uh, let's see how we can see what happens here. Okay, so first, he, does, he did a little back step to get a reaction. Um, I'm pretty lazy, so I don't react. He pops down. Now, uh, I actually had, everything I'm doing is just wrong. Uh, I, don't, I don't actually recommend you have your knees pin, pinched together like this, like the way my knees are on the bottom. Um, the reason why is this, you know, obviously, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm pinning myself to the ground. All I'm going to say about that is, you know, as you get, as you go along, uh, you know, you get 10, 15, 16 years in, um, you know, you start kind of playing around with these, these quote unquote bad positions and you actually develop a little more comfortability in positions you're not supposed to be in. Now, granted, you know, it depends, you know, if you're going against some of the best in the world, yeah, I obviously what I wouldn't do this. Um, not that he's not good, but, uh, you know, there are people, certain people that, um, it would require for me to like, you know, give my A game. So, but it's an, it's a, it's an open map. We're kind of playing around. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lazy anyway. So, uh, so don't recommend going to this position, but let's, let's see how this goes. So he's really fighting for that pin. He's got it. Okay. So right there. Okay. So this position, uh, is very, very common for, to deal with the one, one way I deal with, uh, just like wrestlers, uh, that really like to pin the hips and be lower on the body. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit long-winded about this, but there's something very interesting going on. So the right hand, my top hand, is placed on the head. My right elbow is actually framing out on his shoulder. This is to, uh, to actually impede any further progression of, of pressure. Now, this isn't going to last forever. Uh, you know, if the guy's really, really big, I've had this broken, you know, broken down where they can just press through my elbow. But again, they have to generate a lot of force and spend a lot of energy doing that. So... Um, also what it's doing is, uh, not just a framing, but if he decided, if he actually beat my hook, which is my right leg there, my top leg, if you were to actually beat my hook and jump around to the, my backside, I could essentially sit up, um, and pin his head to the mat, scoot away and produce maybe some sort of guard, go inverted. There's, there's options, uh, but essentially I'm not, you know, I'm not put in side control. Um, that's kind of the idea with the top arm, uh, simply put at this current, uh, you know, at this current moment. My hook obviously is doing what it's supposed to do. My top hook um, is always going to try to stay to the inside just to be uh, an annoyance. Um, obviously, if I keep that hook in, he can't get to the backside. So um, this also impedes his move in that direction. So he's going to really have to fight to free his legs here. Uh, one thing I'll tell you with your hooks is I always tell people, and I, you know, uh, people say they do it, but, you know, uh, it takes a lot of practice. You, you should always be keeping tension uh, in your hooks, right? Like I never actually lo lose connection when somebody's actively trying to pass my guard. If I have this like kind of hook game, uh, the left arm, my left arm is actually very important here too. Uh, as you can see, I have wrist control. The reason why I have wrist control and I may switch to bicep control is so that, uh, is to prevent any, prevent any kind of connection with that arm connecting to my upper body. So whether it be my shoulder, my neck, I rarely, rarely, rarely will allow someone to attach to the, um, uh, upper part of my body, which is basically my shoulders, my neck, and my head. Uh, if you were to reach up there and get control of that, then the pressure that he starts generating forward will actually um, begin to break me down because I can't uh, basically scoot away. So um, so each one, each limb is doing its thing. My left leg is, you know, it's, 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 it's based on the ground, uh, prepared to bridge. For, it's preparing to bridge. It's preparing to forward shrimp. Uh, it's preparing to back shrimp. Um, or sit up or push the knee. There's all kinds of things that the left leg can be doing and being active. This goes to, this goes to the four uh, connection principle um, to keep everything active. So that being said, let's go. 
Yep, so I get lazy here. So see that now the left foot's active. Going into hook, I switch to the other side. This is a very useful technique. Um, once I switch to the other side, now he's playing a bit of a catch up. Um, he has to not catch up like he's in a bad position, but catch up in a way that he has to adjust. Because I've orientated my body to the other way. Now, this changes things a little bit. I mean, he may prefer this uh, somewhat. A lot of guys will prefer this because I'm going, I'm facing them instead of facing away, uh, technically. Uh, so, uh, but this is a, a good option because I typically do this because I like to go bet left, left to right, left to right, just to keep changing the angles. So it, now, you know, I have that top leg. Now the, my top leg is the wedge, right? It's, 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 it's framing, so he can't really press, uh, press past that yet. Um, and if you notice, my left elbow, my top arm is still on top of his head. So I still have a little bit of head control. My left arm is being heavy on the, on the, uh, the leg. I mean, I'm sorry, his uh, shoulder. And my right arm was actually now controlling the wrist. We couldn't see it, but it was controlling the wrist. Now, uh, I like to uh, play around here. If he's not careful, this is a very common setup that I like to do. My bottom leg will actually uh, pull to my chest. So my knee will pull to my chest. I'll switch to the other side and I'll pull it, put it out to, to go into a triangle. And um, this is a very common attack from this type of Z guard. Uh, well, it's not even a Z guard anymore, but uh, it's kind of knee shield position. But you can certainly do it from knee shield, Z guard. Um, uh, if you have these kind of frames established, but really notice on the now on the other side, I have head control, I have wrist control. One thing you should notice too, uh, just for the beginners, my top hand, my left hand that's holding his head. Notice that, and and most of my things that I'm doing, notice it, I'm not actively pushing him away this whole time. I think a lot of people get into this like. Uh, when the person on top pressures in, you put you feel like you have to push away, uh, and this is how you get tired. Technically, what I'm doing is I'm pulling him in, but I'm not pulling him in straight in alignment with me. I'm pulling him in down to the mat, um, which is very very different. My legs are actually active, but they're actually they're not pushing him away. They're they're angling him off um, to the side. Um, this is very different than me trying to push uh, push away from him in the direction that he's pressing. So. All right, now I'm switching to the other side, but now I'm choosing to sit up. The reason why I can sit up now is because if you notice now he has extension. This is very common. It's not bad, uh, and it's you know it's 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 it's, it's it is bad, but it's not a you know the um, you know oh you're screwed. Uh, you could be, but if you look at the if you look at Ryan on top here, he's uh, he's a, he's over, he's overextended, right? Um, I'm sure he'll fix this. But this is the reason why I'm able to sit up and while um, there's all the space between us because, you know, his head is way over his knees. Um, and, you know, wrestlers tend to do this a lot because they, they get connection and they control your hips and they control your body, uh, upper body, and that's how they can progress forward. Um, but now that, that, now that I've generated space, that overextension uh, is not going to uh, benefit the wrestler anymore, the person on top. So, uh, but again, let's, you know, look at my connections. Head control, moving to um, tricep. Uh, my idea probably here is to do a simple butterfly sweep, uh, but it's very hard to do on wrestlers because they typically have a really good base. And if he's not a wrestler, I apologize, but um, you know the tucked-in shirt. Uh, I think he's a wrestler. <laughs> so okay, so uh, opted to go away from the hook, but I'm still keeping my hand position. I'm going into a Z guard now. Now I actually am in a Z guard. He's doing the leg weave. Looks like I'm popping up for a Kimura. I typically don't go for a Kimura from Z guard uh, just because it's not, it's, it's, it, it tends up being a more of a muscle move. But I will threaten it just like I did. I wasn't really trying to go for it. I just threatened it to see what he's, what to get a reaction. And the reaction that I got was him leaning um, to his right. Uh, and this actually angles him off uh, in, in a different direction, even for that moment. Um, nothing came of it, but why not try it? There we go. So now I'm sitting up again. Uh, man, you know, notice really, again, the head control and the wrist control. You know, if he, you know, he has to be very, very careful uh, playing into a, into a guard like this. Um, you 
know, but you know, he, he's got he's got good top game, so he's very aware. He's not going to get caught with, with something and have to get tricky. So right there. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where I switch my hip and I go the other direction to get to a triangle. So that's what I just did. I switched my hip and got and, and I'm moving into a triangle now. The issue is uh, obviously is he's his right arm is doing a very good job of of grabbing my leg. Um, the problem he's going to run into is because I still have head and arm control. As soon as I start wiggling that le that leg around, the right arm is actually technically inferior uh, in holding that foot. If I start to if I move my right leg in a certain circular motions or even extension or kicking, and the leg is typically stronger than the arm. Now it doesn't mean that I'm just going to pop it out. It's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to get out, but. Um, but certainly he's in more of, uh, of trouble now because I have an angle. So if you can clearly see that, you know, it's, I'm, there's, a, there's a fully off to the side. Boom. So as you can see, um, uh, I te technically what I did there was I pulled him a little bit to the, pull him to get him to post. But uh, in doing that, he, he lost uh, my leg. Uh, now he's he's effectively stuck in a triangle. Not the end of the world. Uh, not a triangle. I'm sorry. It's a you know it's like a soft lock. So, but he is in a in danger of getting triangled because my leg has you know uh, gotten over the shoulder and um, he's you know his head and arm are isolated. So this could be a problem. Uh, but I think he gets out of this. So no worries. So he stacks or he he pulls up, which is good. He's trying to generate space. I'm uh, doing an under now. He's doing a really good job here. Um, I really like how he got out of this. Uh, you know, he he's he's kind of hipping in. He's getting, he's pulling me up uh, on top of his uh, his legs here, kind of like a, um, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like when you <laughs> uh, it's like a sled move. Like I think I think he's called a sled. It's like you pull the person up on to. So it's almost like a double under kind of pass kind of move. But this is a very common technique used in passing, uh, actually breaking someone's guard as well. Um, you know, standing up getting the person up on your on your uh, thighs, leaning back, getting posture, getting your posture back, getting space. Um, for me to effectively finish a triangle, I must control posture. If I cannot control the posture, then no triangle typically, unless I have really, really long legs, which I don't. So um, so now, you know, it's uh, if he starts to create space, which it looks like he's going to do because he has me off the floor, now I'm effectively, because he has a good... Uh, 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 base here and he's got you know good structure uh, now I'm kind of carrying my weight which kind of sucks which you know I don't like to do so I'm carrying my weight so my legs are basically holding me on I go for an underhook to try to my right arm's kind of going to an underhook to try to sweep him over um, but he's already you know he's pretty he's got me pretty elevated here so boom so the triangle pops open not the end of the world I was going to try to finish, but now it is the end of the world. So <laughs> he got out. Uh, so typically when somebody pops out of a triangle, I'll transition right to a K guard. Um, it's just really good because now that he's standing up, we can go into leg locks. Um, but, you know, the, I'm so tight to his body. You know, K guard is always a pretty good option uh, because, you know, K guard it can enter into leg locks very easily. There are certain guards that enter into leg locks very easily, and K guard's one of them. Um, so... We'll see how, how he deals with that. So that now I'm kind of going into a K guard position. He does good at fighting that that back hook off. I turn to the back side now. Uh, so my top leg is threading over. I don't have a really good knee line. I don't suspect I'll finish this. But he does a, uh, a quick back step here, which is smart. He doesn't want to get stuck in backside 50-50, uh, which was where that was kind of headed. Uh, but he does a back step. He's actively trying to beat that hook off. Um, with his right hand uh, and I'm just kind of holding on for the right here uh, for the back step and I lose the foot I'd opt to come up because uh, I lost the foot I could have maybe opted to go into another leg entanglement but uh, he seemed pretty good about you know defending and uh, the timing wasn't quite right I didn't feel it was correct so I opted to try to get on top just trying to try to play the uh, see if I can get him on bottom uh, wrestlers are really interesting and, and he's not just a wrestler he's got really good jiu-jitsu too so I don't want to just pin him, a, you know, label him as a wrestler, but um, he's, uh, you know, I, I wanted to see what his guard was like and see if I could play a little top game. We'll see if it happens. Nope, he wrestled up. So, <laughs> so he wrestled up. He got up quick, uh, which is 
the kind of the right thing to do. Um, now I'm back down. So uh, I throw this little cheap little uh, quick uh, neck check here. I thought I'd go, go and see if I can throw a little um, like guillotine in, but it doesn't have any posture. So if you get some to posture though, um, this is a kind of a cool little trick. You can just pull the head down, raise your elbow up with your other arm. Um, and then, you know, you can technically finish somebody if they're not careful. So he put up postures up. Now we're right back to square one. So now I'm playing like a seated guard, more butterfly position. I'm kicking at his feet now. Uh, because he is leaning forward, uh, like wrestlers do. Uh, it was tape fell off there. So, uh, but he's he's leaning forward. Now he's not leaning. He's leaning forward now. Now I try to do a quick arm drag. Um, didn't, uh, didn't work. Um, looks like we're about to go into the same position if we're not careful. So uh, I was playing a little more active because I want to be seated, play active, but now I'm pulling to the side. But again, look at my position I'm going to yet again. Um, this is how I'll deal with, uh, again, people that are putting really good pressure. And he's got really, really, really good pressure uh, coming forward. So look at this. Look at that. See his hips kind of fall back. This is one reason why um, I really liked uh, rolling with guys like this because they don't really give me any leg lock entries. You know, the legs are completely pretty much almost out of the equation. I have to get him really elevated and put a, or at a minimum, I have to do a lot of work to get him forward. Um, get him forward and so that I can get to his legs. Uh, wrestlers are actually very good at keeping their legs back. Uh, so it makes me have to work uh, more if I actually want the legs. Uh, so, but in this, this particular case, I'm, I'm, I'm happy trying to, trying to play the upper body. So again, he's doing the pin and pass. We have the same exact position. See if we can come up with something new here. Okay, so see he he, he pulled he. So this is what I was talking about earlier. He goes to this to the front side now. Now he's going to the front side. My right, my top right hand uh, is now can do what it's supposed to be doing the whole time. Uh, it was kind of waiting for that to happen. So we pin the head. I pin the head and I get up. Yeah, it's very difficult to to um, to actually. Uh, uh, pass. I mean, he's so low on the body that it's going to be very, very difficult. Now, this doesn't mean that he doesn't have a move. He actually does something really, really cool right here that I liked. Um, he, uh, you'll, you'll see in just a second, he, he spins under and and uh, takes me back over to my guard. The thing is, is like, um, if you can't progress past the hips, then we're, it, the position is somewhat nullified. So I get up. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe he'll let it go. Maybe he'll try to go from my back again. And then I can invert or I can go back to a guard or maybe stand up. But he does it right here, so he rolls me over. I'm, I'm kind of chilling right here. I'm like, I think I'm good. But he has my two legs pinned together, and that's that's a problem. So even though I'm on top, I'm quickly about to be on bottom. Boom. But now no, nothing really happened. I mean, we uh, he he reset the position, which is great. Um, and now we're right back to guard. Uh, looks like he was going for my foot there, but he let it go. So now we're uh, now we're playing a little bit of a different game. Now we're playing a little bit of top position. Uh, or I'm sorry, he's playing a stand up game. So he's standing a little bit. This is uh, this could be dangerous. Oh, so he's going for a toll hold. We're gonna let that go. Boom. Okay, so that was a quick little foot sweep. Uh, just because he allowed me to get connection to both his legs, and I was able to turn and uh, spin him. So just real quick, just to see it again, the setup. Um, because I thought it was interesting. So we're playing like a loose stand up here. So right here. So as you can see, I'm pull, I am pull him with my left arm. My right leg, I haven't actually got connection with my right arm yet to his other leg. It's my right foot, um, that my right hook that's pulling him. So what's happening here is my left arm is pulling his left leg in a circular motion. I'm sorry, my left arm is pulling his right leg in a circular motion. My right leg is hooked, uh, pulling my knee to my chest so to bring him in. So it's, it's it causes like a, a foot sweep. Boom. So now that we're here, I'm going to try to hold this leg so I can posture up. So I use that leg. I keep it off the ground to get up. Uh, if I were to let that leg go, he would just wrestle back up and be back on top. Uh, but I'm going to try to elevate that leg. That's why my elbow is so high um, so that I can get to the top. Boom. So now I've got the top. Finally, <laughs> so I've got top position. So now he's going to play some guard, which is cool because I get to see, you know, what how I uh, get to see some uh, some jujitsu here. So he goes for an underhook. Um, 
he's got a bit of a knee shield up there on with his top uh, with his left leg his top leg i immediately go for the cross face now this is the difference i mean um notice the difference in the game that we're playing right uh you know the, what he was doing on top versus what i'm doing on top i'm trying to control the upper body uh you know and again you know, I, this is not wrong what he's doing by any means. You know, he's got a good underhook with his right arm. Um, he's probably going to start framing out, trying to get to, you know, um, you know, like a half, a good active half guard or maybe even a deep half if, he's, if he wants to do that, try to get to a sweep, wrestle up. There's all kinds of things he can pull, pull off from here because he is technically starting to get under my hips. I'm trying to nullify this by giving him a cross face. Now, he did a really good job with that top arm, framing me away, framing onto my neck. And he's effectively generated space here. This is really good for him. Uh, I'm trying to stay heavy. Uh, typically, when I'm on top like this, I like to get super uh, lazy. I'll call it like a, I call it the wet blanket. You know, it's, uh, it's very common. Um, I just get real just heavy, right? I'm not technically pressing really hard in. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get connection with that left arm, but I just keep constant just heaviness on that top leg, and you know he's fine with it because he's got his he's got his left top left leg wedged in. He's totally fine. Now we're doing some hand fighting. Um, the reason why we're hand fighting I don't want him controlling my left arm. I need my left arm to get control of his head. You know I can't just dive in with my right arm and try to get a hold of his head. He would just slip out and take my back, uh, or you know for numerous other things he could do. My left arm is very critical here. Uh, in establishing a cross face or an overhook, meaning I can get my arm over his head. Maybe I can produce a crucifix position or something because my arm is hanging over top of his uh, top leg. So it's just kind of loosely hanging there. So this hand fight is actually happening. He wants to hold the hand because he probably understands this, number one. But number two, if he can get established with that hand, uh, he's going to do the same thing I did, um, which is start to produce sweeps out of it. Boom. So right there. So I switch. Uh, to over the head. Now, when this happens, uh, now we're going into a bit of a game. So it depends on who gets what first. He's effectively now can get under my hips, but I get control of his head. So we latch on. I know he's going to roll me. He got his good half, but now I'm trying to lock into a, uh, cr a um, cradle. So if I can lock into a cradle and hold on here, I might be able to get back on top or spin him over top of me. He's gable gripping to staying staying tight to my leg. Yep, so I got a good cradle here. If you can see my hands right there in the middle, uh, I am doing a cradle. Um, he's trying to still hold on to that leg. He, if he lets go of that leg, he's in trouble. Uh, my top leg right there that he's holding on to. If that leg were to become free, then he's in a full cradle with my legs free, and that, that, that produces uh, problems. So we're in a bit of a stuck position here. I slide back over, get back on top because he's, he's defending uh, effectively. He does what, exactly what he's supposed to do here with that uh, uh, bottom arm controlling so that I can't go into a guillotine, but it's really the top arm right here, right there. So it's his top arm that grabs my wrist. Um, this is the most effective way um, to really stop these like darts attacks and these, these, uh, you know, these guillotine and anaconda attacks that I'm trying to throw in. But now I'm switching to under his armpit. So I went from controlling the head to switching to armpit now I'm switching my hips over to reverse Kesa. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm trying to mitigate his position. I'm trying to stop um, that. I uh, see that underhook that he has on my right leg. This somewhat nullifies, or at a, at a minimum, it changes uh, the game a little bit. You know, no longer is that that underhook as effective as it was uh, when my hips were in the other direction, especially when he has my legs. So he was in a, a bit of an ad, ad, advantage. But I switch my hips now. Now this creates a different different issue, uh, and the main issue for him uh, now, for me on top, uh, is is I can I have an isolation on his far arm. If I can get an isolation on the far arm, my and get my hips heavy, uh, which they're already super high. My hips are high, which are an issue for him. So just real quick, understand that the reverse case, uh, the reason why it's it can be a, kind of a bad position to be in when you're on top because <laughs> there's a lot of counters, a lot of back takes you can do from somebody on top, reverse Kesa. Um, it really is, the, the, the good and the bad, it really depends on the placement of your hip. So uh, I always tell guys I need to get my hip like 
on top of their face. And I'm, that's what I'm doing here. My hip on the, in reverse case is actually on top of his face. If my hip were next to his hip, which is classic uh, re kind of reverse case, uh, you know, I'm not really, there's, there's a lot of counterattacks you can do. But here, it's kind of an issue. But the underhook, uh, you know, could, do, could pay off here. But let's see. And it did. So is he, the underhook's not really doing much. It, it's his legs that elevated me. So when he had elevated his legs there, uh, it resets me, it resets the position and forces me to go back into more of a facing position, which is going in back to where we were. Boom, right there. So that was a good counter. Um, as soon as I switch my hips, he recognizes this. He elevates me with his legs, knees to his chest, maintains his uh, underhook, starts to get framing in place to create space, and then reset us back to where we were. So that was a good trade off. So now I have a, a knee ride position. Uh, appears that my knee is out. Uh, he has a, uh, would appear to be more of a quarter guard because his top knee is not in front. So it's not a Z guard, uh, but it is a bit more of a, I would say a quarter guard, but a little bit better than his quarter guard. It's a little bit higher on my leg. Uh, almost a reverse de la Hiva position if his bottom, if his right arm was under his leg, but it's not, or grabbing my foot, but it's not. He's controlling my wrist. So that's good. He's actually uh, controlling the wrist, which is what he wants. Boom. So I get a cross face. I just kind of saw it right there. Now that I have the cross face, I'm going to keep pressuring down. I'm swimming in. His top arm, you can't see this, but I remember this roll. His top arm was controlling my top arm. Uh, so his hand was grabbing my wrist. So I couldn't really yeah, progress any further, let's say, with a Dars. It was uh, just kind of controlling. But my main goal right now is to actually free my legs, which I finally did. And now maybe I can get to a side control. We're rolling into somebody else. Okay, so side control has been uh, finally been established. Uh, about to smash heads with the guy next to me, but got side control. Pretty good with his underhooks. Uh, he needs to be careful with the isolation, but I like that his his right arm is fully underhooked onto my hip because he could just uh, dump me over right and wrestle up. This is uh, what uh, really good technique that uh, is used. He has to, basically two double unders. His left, his, his, his left arm, which is the arm that I'm grabbing, is not in the greatest position right now because I'm starting to isolate it and get two on one. But his right arm is pretty good because he could technically bridge up if I'm not careful and knock me over and, and you know turn, turn and wrestle up. So let's see what happens. So, okay, so I've got an isolation on the arm, which is okay. His arm's still tight to his body. It's not pulled away. Okay, so there's some little bullshit technique I do that just kind of gets, it, it's a couple of things. It's actually not bullshit. It <laughs> kind of is, but it, it, it works. Um, effectively, what I'm trying to do, uh, and it's an easy kick out, but um, there is a, a, a point of no return. If I actually pull, pull that foot all the way to that, I mean, I've tapped people this way before. It's kind of silly. But really what I use it for, um, and the reason why I'm doing that, is to impede the bridge. I can I can anticipate that a bridge is actually coming because of his arm placement, uh, and certainly you know that's it's not just because of his arm placement, but people in this position, especially when I start to get the arm isolated, they start to bridge, right, and try to create space so that they can move. If I can impede that just for one second, um, then I can I can get an even tighter position. So that's the only reason why I do that is to be more of an annoyance, uh, but it could be a submission if people are not careful. And as you can see, it kind of worked, I think, because it gave me that one second to get this little step over. It's okay, so now I have a full step over. Um, his head and arm are isolated on the other side of my body. I have his arm, his, his left arm isolated uh, where he's having to grab his own leg there. If you look at the, uh, the hand there, it's grabbing his, uh, his, his hamstring, which is good. It's a good technique. Um, you know, it's, it's a, he's holding on here. Uh, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm I'm not trying to, if you notice, I'm not trying to pull or grab or anything yet. I'm using my right shoulder to put as much downward pressure as I possibly can into his wrist. And to try to pry that or even try to get it a little loose. If I can get it a little loose to pry it away just a little bit, my other hand could actually come into the equation and grab the knuckle line and start to peel the, his arm away from his leg. And in which case, if I did, then it would most likely be over. Um... He, it, it, you can't see what's going on here with his right arm. His right arm, he's doing a good job. He's actually trying to get an, uh, uh, grab my foot, grab under my foot, and push me up. This can effectively get him to be able to move uh, 
most likely in the direction of where his left arm is um, to try to get back on top or undo the triangle that I'm trying to establish. Uh, so his right arm, I would say, is doing a good job of trying to work its way out uh, of this, work the way out of the position. position. And he's uh, protecting his, the arm he should be protecting. Okay, so now the shoulder has effectively uh, separated the arm, uh, the hand from the leg. And now it's, it's, it's probably a matter of time, I don't remember, but look how flat I am here. I really like to just get flat, put chest weight down on that arm, allow no space. Um, because typically what happens, as soon as I were to pop up and get relief, uh, put my chest away from his uh, arm, if, as long as I don't have connection yet, if I start to pull away, then that gives him space to move his arm left, right, left, right, and go to, you know, to where I had to kind of chase it. But I'm just being patient, trying to keep it isolated. It looks like I'm opting to go to Americana, and that was what, that's what ended, ended the match. So, or ended that, that, that round. So, a really good, really good back and forth. Uh, I didn't really see, you know, really anything, any technical mistakes per se. I think a lot of this is timing. Um, a lot of this is a bit of a game, you know, kind of trying to trick each other uh, into, into, um, into getting ahead or getting, getting a reaction so that we can uh, get to a better position. So, so let's say we're going into the same... Okay, so this is a little move I like to pull. Um, the reason why I, again, this is not a technique uh, by any means that I think anyone should do. Um, it's fun just to kind of play around with, but I just straighten my legs. Um, this is kind of a, a bit of a tricky move because I do this to try to get the person to come forward. If the person comes forward, I can shoot into the legs. Um, and the only reason why the person can't press forward and get to mount, or you know, you may think he can jump to mount or jump to side control, because both my hands are actually on his biceps, on both his biceps. So this really does stop the movement. And by the time, even if he were to beat that somehow, it, by the time he gets that, there's just too much space, and my knees would retract and, and, and you know, and be in a, in a, in a guard, uh, which is where he wouldn't want to be, right? So it'd be like in a very deep uh, butterfly guard. Uh, but I do this to trick people to kind of come forward a little bit. I'll release back on my hands to get them to press a little bit more, and then I can shoot my hips in. But uh, most, most people don't fall for it. They just get pin me down, and I just kind of get to the side here, and I go back to my regular position that I feel comfortable in. Okay, so now I switch. I go to – almost got a sweep, but he did a good hip switch there. So I'm kind of in a full guard here. I was thinking about a rack guard, but you know the downward pressure, his wrestling pressure was so good, controlling my hips. Uh, you you can see here, like it's just, you know, rack guard's a good option for wrestlers. I didn't feel like I had a good. He was really leaning far to his right, so you know I can't. Uh, you know, if I was leaner and longer, maybe I could reach my far leg and go underneath and do a rack guard position. But eh, it probably wasn't the best. I didn't feel like it was the best option. I also consider Williams guard here. For a second, you can kind of see me think about Williams guard um, because his arms are they're wrapped around my hips and they are pinned. But if I were to commit to a Williams guard here, you know, I know that his, his the right side of his he's going to start stepping over that my left leg and start to work his way around. Not the end of the world. Williams guard can deal with that to a certain degree, uh, but it ends up being a little bit more of a fight, and I, I didn't want to do that. So I'm happy trying to keep my angle here. Yep. So. Two things are, if you notice, my my right hand is really committed to his, his left arm, right, on that elbow. I keep trying to pull that elbow into my body. Now, I do this because if you're, you're, you're going to see if I'm, you can't see it from the video, but my right arm, that during the past you know, 10, 15 seconds, my right hand was actually pulling his elbow, like a, almost like a chicken wing, pulling it into my body. Um and keeping tension there the whole time. Not like, you know, everything I got, it's just uh, keeping tension there. And the reason why I do that is because if I can keep his right, his left arm connected to my body, um, and he does start to pass to, to fate, you know, to, to, uh, to his right, um, that arm is kind of stuck to my body. It can't move up or down or move anywhere really around. So, um, 
the left part of my body is still attached in a way that where I can create an angle, which is what I was doing with my right leg. You saw my right leg kind of go up on his body a little bit. That's why I do that. I go back to the head because <laughs> uh, the head is now, you know, it's, it's, it's low on my body. My chest is, is, is more free to move. So real quick, this is like the main issue, right? With wrestling, uh, with this type of wrestling. Um, and again, I love wrestling. It's, you know, it's, it's great. Um, but just in this position, if he's on my hips, right, he's got control of my lower body, but no control of my upper body. That's the issue, right? You know, if he can try to control my upper body and he can control my lower body, then my legs would be more active. So I always say it's like you can't have everything. You can have everything maybe for a moment. Uh, there's a bit of a timing thing. But in that moment, I can regain everything back too. So um, he's fully committed to this position, which – Hey, he should be, you know, because he can grind his way through, which is what, you know, typically wrestling is. You kind of grind your way sometimes, um, especially against jiu-jitsu guys that are being really annoying with their guard. You just grind past that shit. So, um, but the issue is now is that he's not progressing forward. Uh, he's still just around my hips. So the upper part of my body is free. Um, my lower body's pinned, but my upper body's free. So I can start getting up. I can start pinning his head. I can frame on his biceps. I can do all kinds of things, and we can stay here for a while. And I'm not expending too much energy doing this because I'm framing. I'm not, uh, I'm not pushing or doing anything super, super active. So I'm kind of chilling. I keep my hand, my, uh, my hand on his head because I know as so I keep that head down to the, at an angle there, he can't progress any, any way forward. Yep, he tries to jump to the other side, which is smart. He's trying to jump around the legs. If he were actually get to the jump around the other, jump to the side, he could effectively start working his way up my body. I would immediately start creating uh, frames to, to stop that and get my legs back into the action. But he didn't because my, my legs are still there. So I did this little move to get him to post. So the reason why I, would, I wanted to do this, uh, I like to do this with wrestlers sometimes or people that are grabbing my hips really tight. Um, to get that, if you notice his right arm is posting on the mat, it's no longer... Uh, clasping onto my hip to where I just can't move. So when I do this quick pull uh, to my left and I'm with my right hook, I, you know, I, I elevate. Sometimes I'll get a sweep, but wrestlers keep their base really far back, right? Uh, if this is a jiu-jitsu guy that doesn't do really any wrestling, I mean, that left leg would be right in my f face and I'd go right into a leg lock. And, you know, the, the left arm would be, you know, gone. So... But I'm only doing this so that I can get him to release my hip and maybe get an underhook on the other side. So he releases my hip, and now I go to the other side. But now the angle's completely changed. He doesn't have my hips anymore. And now I'm in a full guard with my legs, and I'm starting to, get, I'm starting to creep higher um, to shoulder line. Now here we go. So because of that, and I, I, because I got him to post the other side, got him off my hips, uh, it, I changed the angle, radically, radically changed the angle from one side to the other side, right? Um, and now I have, uh, I have the superior angle, which I can start going into omoplatas, uh, kimuras, uh, kimura positions. Uh, his other hand is also posted on the mat. And I think he, you know, at, at that moment, there was a timing issue there and he realized that, 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 that was, uh, that was not good. So he recognized it. And again, that's what I think with these type of roles, we're both just kind of anticipating and looking for these little little timing errors, right? Or maybe these little tricks where I got him to post and boom, and then that's it, right? So I don't know if this is it, but uh, I certainly have an angle, and that can be a problem. And it's isolated. My leg's getting heavy. If he's not careful, my right leg's going to become free. If I switch my hips now to my right, let's say I were to scoop my butt out to my right, my right leg would become free. And he would have a, uh, another set of problems. Okay, so that was just a simple Kimura uh, trap. The reason why that Kimura I didn't need the other arm locked in necessarily is because my left, uh, my left, my top left leg. And again, you can't see this, but it's very heavy at an angle. It's angling off heavy. It's not just like crunching down, right? It's it's at an angling like, like a push, an pushing at an angle and, and kind of crunching down. Uh, and this puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the shoulder already. And then all I have to really do is isolate it even further with my top right arm and then press up. Plus, he, probably, he may have tight shoulders. And if guys have tight shoulders, 
it can produce a, a submission without actually locking it and have it needing to lock it in. But he's he's fully extended here. There's no reason to fully lock it in and go to a full and full rule. So I think we both knew what happened with that. It was just that little switch, and then that and then it kind of got got messed up. And I think we're coming to the end of the roll here. He's pulling guard on me. Yep. He's got a good underhook. So I, I play, I'm going for a little, uh, not, I'm not really going for an ankle lock. I'm just attaching to the leg to, to go into the leg lock entanglement because we didn't do much of that. And he's fishing uh, for my bottom leg. And I, I like to turn to my side like this and just hold that leg, allow them to spin. And sometimes I keep the leg, sometimes I don't. It just spins out like that, but hey, it doesn't matter. We're reset to this, we reset again. We go again. Okay, I slide in to like a little baseball slide and try to do a reap little reapy, but we're going to run out of time here. I go knees down, scoop the other leg, and then I think we run out of time. Boom. So what a great roll. Uh, uh, really awesome. Super, super technical. Uh, but, uh, man, uh, you know, I think he's, uh, this guy's really good. Ryan, Ryan's really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope to uh, get another roll with them soon uh, because um, I, I, you know, I need a lot of that uh, <laughs> wrestling pressure. So, uh, anyways, uh, that'll be it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it.